going to try and keep you all night, but that's why I've been kind of in a hurry uh, this, to start with because this, this is, I feel like Satan has done more through music than he has anything else in the world. I just do, uh, and maybe you'll think that way, maybe you don't. I think TV's bad. It can be bad. The internet, cell phones, all that's bad. But I want to try and show you how I, I see how Satan has moved in uh, the world, in America especially, in the last 30 or 40 years through music. And, and so I told you that James Lee had triggered this thought. Uh, James Lee, I don't know if he was in here or not when I told it, but he, he drove my truck and he said, he brought my truck back and says, uh, why is there country music in your, uh, in your truck? And I thought, <laughs> he don't want to drive my truck no more. And, and, but anyhow, he can drive my truck anytime he wants. And so whenever I got home and I got to thinking, you know what? We could, I could probably go out here in every one of your cars and, and, and hit your radio and look at the, the stations that are saved. And I, I wanted to say, before I'd say that could tell me a lot about you. Uh, but I don't know that it does. So anyway, so here's what I want to, uh, just kind of share with you about music. And, and give you my thoughts and what I feel like the Lord has shown me. Uh, I'm not trying to condemn nobody. I need help myself, all right? Uh, nothing like good music. Ain't, I'm, I mean, that was good. Uh, the, and so anyway, God created music. We know that. In case you didn't, Job chapter 38 and verse 4, it says, Where was thou when I lay, laid the foundations of the earth? In verse 7, it says, When the morning stars sang together, and all the, the, all the sons of God shouted for joy. God had asked Job, he said, where was you when I hung the earth? Where was you in the beginning of time when uh, all the stars had shouted, when they had sang? And I, I, you've, you've heard this, if you've been around, we've watched the videos from Louis Giglio about uh, how God is and how incredible is God. But I got to looking this up about scientists have proven uh, that stars make music, that they make a noise, that even scientists, evolutionists are agreeing that, that, that the universe, the stars are singing out a beautiful uh, uh, noise. And NASA's exploding exploration exploration program. You can look it up for yourself. It says we can hear it with our ears, but the stars in the sky, one performing a concert, one that never stops. The biggest stars make the lowest, deepest sounds like tubas and uh, double basses. Small stars have high-pitched voices like uh, celestial flutes. These virtuous don't just play one note at a time either. Our old sun has thousands of different sound waves bouncing around inside it at any given moment. So uh, we, we realize that God had, had made music and, and it was there in the beginning. He made music. I believe that he had the stars sing him a tune, singing how great thou art. I mean, it, it's, it's just to praise him. But in the book of Genesis, the first, the first mention that we have of, of singing or song, it was uh, in chapter 4. This is uh, the eighth generation. You can trace it back to... Uh, the eighth generation of man. It says, and his brother's name was Jubal, who was the father of all such as handled the harp and the organ. And and so I believe that that God created music. You can say amen with me if you will. And, and that God created music in the beginning. It's always been here, and it'll always be here. And you say, will it be in heaven? Absolutely. Music's going to be in heaven. Revelation 14. And John says, I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters, as the voice of great thunder, and I heard the voice of harpers, harping with harps. And and they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. No man could learn that song but the 144,000 which were redeemed from the earth. And here's what I'm telling you. God surrounds himself with angelic choirs that are singing praises and honor to him. And, and so at the birth of Jesus in Luke chapter 2, uh, it says, And suddenly there was an angel multitude of, in heavenly hosts praising God, saying glory to God in the highest on, on earth, peace, goodwill towards men. So when Jesus, God came in the form of a babe, lying in a manger, it says there was a host of heavenly angels singing glory to God in the highest. So God loves music. And let, I, I'm not trying to bore you. I don't have much for introduction, but i got to get to it here in just a minute. I'm going to get in your car here in a minute. Psalms chapter 30, verse 4. It says, Sing unto the Lord, O you saints. Give thanks to remembrance of the holy. Psalms 33. Praise the Lord with harps, singing to him with postures, instruments, ten strings. Goes on. The, the purpose of music was and is and always will be to praise God, okay? And, and the longest book in the Bible, the book of Psalms, is, is 150 books. It's a book of songs. Isn't that something? In case you didn't know that, it's biblical to sing is what I'm trying to tell you. I told Edward a while ago, I know um, Emily's run the sound. I dropped this mic here. I said if she ever turned that blessed thing on while I was singing, I'd go back there and have to get her because I know that I can't sing. I, I, I thought I could. I, just, I said, Audrey, I'm going to sing that. She said, please don't. Please don't. 
don't. Uh, but here, here's what I'm telling you. It's biblical to sing. In, in the book of Psalms, the, uh, 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 Psalms 86, 12, it says uh, it, that the Hebrew word there, praise, means to, uh, to use the hand physically, extended hands. This is what praise. And uh, Psalm 71, 8, I won't read it. says it's a hymn. It's simply singing amazing grace is, is what this means here. In the book of Psalms 117, birth, uh, verse 10, that the Hebrew word there is Shabbat. It means to address in a loud tone. So we realize that the book of, of, of Psalms is a song book, and he's telling us here that you can address with a loud tone, with the raising your hand, whatever. And, and so, uh, oh, it says, oh, praise uh, the Lord, all you nations, praise him, all you people. The first one we see means to make show, to boast, the foolish, celebrate, sing, to be worthy of. The second praise uh, we see there. Is this, Psalms, let me get on, Psalms 146, 47, 48, 49, and 50, all start with praise ye the Lord. And here's what I'm telling you, singing pleases God. It pleases God. You say, I can't sing, I can't either, but I believe it pleases God. He said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. It not unto you. He didn't say make it unto Audrey, he said make it unto the Lord. So, bless God, I'm going to sing. Uh, not tonight, I don't guess, we might. Luke chapter 19. Here's what the disciples, the Pharisees told him. He said, you tell your disciples, he said, you tell them to hold their peace. Luke chapter 19, he said, if these hold their peace, the rocks will cry out. So I believe God will always be praised through music. And, and I believe he, he created it for that. Every nation, every culture thrives on music. I don't care where you go around the world. Any tribe, you'll see them dancing, acting foolish, what we think. That's their music. How do you know what you're saying? I don't. Uh, but here's what I'm telling you. We have, a, we have music to us available anywhere any time, any place, don't we? How many of you in here, you're not in trouble? Do you have Alexa? Do you? Raise your hand. Bless God, we don't want one. <laughs> I do not trust Alexa. But Alexa's that little devil that sits over on your counter and you can say, hey, play this. Play, play this. I don't trust her. She'll talk back to you. We, matter of fact, Alexa, she's unplugged. You want her, you can have her. We have XM Radio, iHeart, Pandora, YouTube. But here's what I'm telling you, what I believe, that the biggest thing Satan has ever done or is doing is through music. And you say you're crazy. Well, I'm going to show you what I think. Anyway, Ezekiel chapter 28, 13. This is the description of Satan, okay? Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. He, 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 he's showing us a picture of what Satan looks like. We think he's a little pitchfork man. He's showing us here. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardis, topaz, and the diamond, the barrel, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carpinal, and gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets and thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day thou wast created. So Satan was created with, with instruments, string, uh, stringed instruments, with pipes in his body, okay? That's how he was created. And he was cast down, look. Out of heaven because of pride. Isn't it amazing we just come through pride month? But anyway, Satan fully understands musical composition. He was originally the lively musical instrument. He knows how to compose and inspire music that seduced the heart away from God. He inspires the writing of music and lyrics and, and, and that disturb, agitate, drive the heart to passions and emotions and thoughts that lead into a trap. And, and I'm not trying to dissect a bunch of songs tonight. Uh, I'm just trying to show you what, what God showed me, okay? Uh, me and Steve Jacobs has been on the phone this evening. But here, here's what I'm going to tell you, what I, and I may say it again here in a minute. But Satan has learned how to put a good beat together, and everybody in the world will sing along with that song, and we don't even realize what it just said. And here, here's, here's what I, I wanted to get into the subliminal messages. And even today, this morning, I was, uh, me and Eddie was talking and uh, the, the, the uh, songs back in the, I remember going to church and they'd have record uh, burning and all this stuff and, and they'd back masking and playing Ozzy Osbourne and all these hardcore heavy metal songs. And even this morning, I can't remember the one, but he, Eddie played it. He said, listen to this, Blake, but you ever heard this? I said, no. Nah. And, and he said, I smoke marijuana, smoke marijuana, I like marijuana. I don't remember the name of it. I like rock and roll. That's the name of it, I believe it was. But anyhow, and I said, Eddie, that ain't nothing. That's child's play now. Now we're singing it forward. We don't have to back mask. We're, the whole world is blasting this uh, devilish stuff out of our mouths, and we don't even realize what we, we're saying. He uses a variety of instruments to construct a sound that can uh, change the direction and content of our heart. I'm going to show you here in just a minute. He under, Satan understands music better than any human who has ever lived or ever will live, and he hates God. 
And that's a dangerous combination. Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 12, it says, Who art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, the son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which dost weaken the nations? He, Isaiah says, how, Who are you that has destroyed the nations? He's a musical in. You've destroyed the nations. You've weakened the foundations. And Satan weakened nations. He causes, he causes the earth to tremble. You say, oh, you're crazy. I, I don't believe. I, I'm, hopefully, I, you'll, whenever you leave, you'll think different. If you think that music is just... Just um, a little turn this on easy list and yeah, it's good, right? I don't think so. I think Satan is, if you'll look at our teens and how our culture is changing, what else could it be? Uh, anyway, music is a supernatural weapon of mass destruction in the hands of Satan. And, and, and the, I go through here in the Hebrew word weaken, it means to waste away, to overthrow, to decay, to disable. It, uh, the, the, the Hebrew word tremble means to quiver with violent emotion, especially anger or fear. Music moves the heart like no other sound on earth. Satan knows exactly how to use it to move the heart away from God. And isn't it amazing how you can listen to one song and your whole attitude changes? Now, I've been experimenting with Audrey this week. She don't even realize it. I've had my, my iPad sitting in there and I'd be playing this song. And she'd say, turn that off. And I, honestly, I, I, had, I, had, I would Google this. It's, it's ungodly. I wouldn't even tell you to listen to it. But I thought, I, how could I... I've heard this, and I thought I, I just—I was sitting in there, and I, I YouTube this song, and I listened to it. It is so ungodly. I had to ask forgiveness for even listening to it. And this is played on on the local radio stations. Back in 20 years ago, it would have been censored; would not have even played it. And today, our kids are bumping it, pulling into church parking lot. Now, I'm, I'm just—I'm not being mean with nobody. I'm not calling your kid out. I call them on now. But here, here's what I'm telling you: I watched this. God's honest truth, laying in the bed last night, my phone gets a text. And I thought, who in the world? I looked over at my phone, and it says, hey, baby, you coming to the party tonight? I didn't know what to wear, and it's a girl that's 99% naked. And I deleted I didn't even tell Audrey. And you think Satan ain't in this thing? You just think out of coincidence that I Googled this, this song and played it in my house, and I felt like all hell had came into my house. Oh, Yeah. The Hebrew word shake, it, 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 it means confused noise, a rattling or an uproar of crashing. The devil uses vibrations of music to turn it into a confused noise that shakes us to our very core, the very core of our heart. And Emily, did you get that? Is it going to work? And here, here's the thing, before she plays this, I'm not going to play a bunch of music. I started to and just show you how to move you because I promise you I could play music that you've never heard or even you've heard and I can look at the, 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 the reaction on your face and tell you how Satan's dealing with your heart. But this right here is what's going on in the world today. You see, we live in little Randolph County, but if you get outside of Randolph County, get to Charlotte, you, even in Greensboro, you get into Los Angeles, you get into Las Vegas, they are packing theaters, they are packing football stadiums with 7,500,000 teenage kids and, and young adults, and this is it's called rave parties. Back when I was a heathen, there was a few raves they would have, and there'd be about 30 or 40 people there, uh, but nowadays, there's 50,000, 75,000 people packing these, these stadiums around America today, and it's just a big freak fest. And so I want, I, you've never heard this. I hope you haven't. But I want you to play this and just show, I want you to feel the feeling they're feeling. And so they're packing stadiums and, and, and coliseums and anywhere they can get this together. And guess what? There's not a word even spoken. I, I mean, it's just a bunch of beating and banging and noise and, and these instruments that's coming together. And I'm telling you, I played this in my house the last couple of days and she didn't know what I was doing. And she said, Jamie, it feels like the devil. What are you listening to? And there's one that's called Dark Rave. 
And all that's showing in these dark raves is pictures of Satan and stuff floating around the room. And it's thousands and thousands of kids bouncing around, taking their clothes off, doing ungodly acts. And I'm going to tell you what, it sounds like hell to me. Now you say, I, I, you say that's far out. Well, this is what we're dealing with. Matthew chapter 22, 13, it says, Then, they, they said, the king, then said the king to his servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer dark. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And when I watch this, and when I listen to these raves, and this crazy psychedelic music, and uh, it, 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 to me, it's a picture of hell. And I think Satan is just preparing people for hell. <sighs> you walk into any retail store today, I dare you, go tomorrow, you go to a retail store tomorrow, and they're playing this beat. You don't even know it. And the whole time, your body, your mind is getting upbeat. And it's called euphoria. You, music can make you feel supernatural. Now, I'll just put, I won't put myself in here. Every football star, basketball star, you see him walking around before the game, you know what he's doing? He's listening. He's listening. And their studies don't done right now with military, and they're they're pumping their minds up. And here's what I'm telling you: it makes you feel to, uh, supernatural. And here's what music will do to you that we don't even realize. It's called euphoria. It's a feeling or state of intense excitement and happiness. The euphoria of success will fuel your desire to continue doing what you're doing. The studies have shown that music can actually lead to an increased levels of dopamine in the brain. This is the same chemical that floods your brain, making you feel high when you take certain drugs. And, and so this is what we're doing. Maybe not you, maybe not me, but what people are doing in society, I think Satan is producing all this music. And it's just, it's changing our hearts, it's changing our minds, and it's creating this feeling. Why else would somebody want to get in the middle of a, 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 a 50,000 people and bounce around, tear their clothes off, and act like a fool? It's because we're, they're putting their minds in levels that it's, it's like taking ecstasy. All because... And here, here's what I'm telling you. You say, how can music change it? Here's Bible, 1 Samuel 16. Samuel anoints David. Uh, he, he finds a little, little... Go tells Jesse, says, go get your boys. He brings the boys by him and says, nah, isn't there another? He says, yeah, I have one little boy, but he's out in the field tending sheep. And, and Samuel says, go get him. And then immediately, this is when, when, when Samuel knows that David's going to be the king, he anoints him. And then in verse 17, Saul said, Provide me now a man that could play. Well, well, before this happened, it says that an evil spirit fell on Saul because he knew that something was going on. An evil spirit fell on him. And so Saul orders the people. He says, Find for me a man. Here's what verse 17. Now that can, get, that can play well and bring him to me. Saul says, Bring me a man. You know who, I think it's amazing who they brought, <laughs> little David. Uh, look here, in, in verse 23, And it came to pass when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul, that David took a harp and played with his hand, so Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit dis- departed from him. Here's what I'm telling you, music changed you. There's more to this thing than, you, than your radio dial. I'm going to get to that in a minute. Proverbs 25, 20. As he that taketh away the garment in cold weather, and as vinegar unto uh, uh, to night... So is that he that singeth songs on a heavy heart. That's what Proverbs said. And here's what I, I'm telling you. Artists understand to have a big hit, they have to make you feel the music. And I, I, I've never cared much about music. I, I've just never have. Now, I'm, I'll share some of my story in a minute maybe with you. But here's what I'm going I'm to tell you. Hank Williams Jr. in the 70s, early 80s, he understood this. The song Drifter. You know it. If you don't, <laughs> you don't get to but it's about old, old Hank is hitchhiking to Nashville. And he says, tell me, can you, uh, can you make folks cry when you play and sing? Can you moan the blues? Uh, what's the rest of it, Edward? Can you bend them to guitar string? Tell me, can you make folks feel what you feel inside? That's what Hank was saying. And I, I, here, here's what I'm going to tell you. This is what artists have to do. Uh, can you make folks feel what you feel inside? And we listen to a song, and, 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 and anyway, it'll change us. The beat changes us. Satan is in the music. But I, I would play these songs. These are the number one songs on the billboards from the 70s to now. I would play these, but when I was experimenting with this, here come Audrey in there, boy. <laughs> so I ain't going to play them because she's got to act a little crazy. But in the 1970s, Audrey, don't you do it. 
But it, it don't embarrass me in the church. But here, here's what I'm saying. In the 1970s, I was, I was born in the late 70s, but in the 1970s, number one song on the billboards. Uh, it, it stayed on the number one chart. Maybe this isn't the number one song to you, me neither, but it is to Audrey. She likes it. The Bee Gees, Too Much Heaven. That was the number one song. It was about romance. Pretty good. I, I mean, she, as soon as I started playing it, it, I said, oh, I know that, I know that. She didn't know I was taking notes. But here, here in, 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 in the 1980s, okay, it was about romance. Number one song on the billboard for like 16 weeks. In the 1980s, guess what it was? Olivia Newton-John, Let's Get Physical. Yeah, you knew that too, didn't you? Y'all did too. Let's get physical. So what's she talking about? She wasn't talking about uh, working out, was she? No, it went from romance, it went to get physical, right? And, and, so the, and then in the 90s, guess what this was? This is when I uh, come along. Now, I didn't agree with this. But in the 90s, Mariah Carey and Boys to Men, One Sweet Day. It was about losing a loved one. And, and here's where it all started. It's in the, and I listened to this. I've been listening to music for a week now, or two weeks, but I, I was trying to dissect the words. And how did this get to number one? But it, it, here's what it says. It's about somebody that had passed away. And it says, I know you're looking down from heaven and I'm going to tell you this is this is where this isn't uh, Chubby Checker and, and James Brown now James Brown was a freak but it, it, this is uh, I think this is where Satan started to deceive him he starts playing this music number one on the billboards for 17 weeks everybody in America is listening to it you can say you what if you want to but here's what we're doing we're repeating these words and saying I know you're looking down from heaven can I tell you your loved ones are not looking down from heaven? Let me give you another one. 2000s. Justin Timberlake. Never did like him. But it, the, 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 the song is about trying to steal another man's girl. And he gets real prideful at the end of it. And, and he tells how smooth he is towards the end of that song. And I mean this thing stayed on the number one in the billboards for like 18 weeks, 19 weeks. And I'm thinking, who even likes that joke? But evidently somebody does. And so what we're doing, it that means that the whole, all of America, even other countries, are repeating what he's saying word for word, day after day after day. And all he's talking about is stealing that man's wife. Talking about how good I look. So you see what we're doing? We're building society from romance to getting physical to... Uh, now, I could go all through songs, but we don't have time. I, I, don't, I don't have time. But in, in to now, uh, we, we're taking you... We're, it's fornication. We're cheating. And these are pretty clean songs if you listen to it. 2010 to now, I guess you, you've sung this one. Maybe you hadn't. I think it's sickening. Old Town Road. Held the number one charts for 19, number one spot on the billboard for 19 weeks. Uh, what's that guy's name? Ota, what is it? Okay, okay. Uh, um, anyway, he holds the record for the longest stretch at number one for 19 weeks. It also became the fastest song in history to be certified diamond. You know what his favorite word is? Can't nobody tell me nothing. And he's a homosexual and they say it's related to, to the, that. I ain't going to repeat it. But here's what I'm, I'm going to tell you. This is just four songs that I've gave you. And I, you can go through there. You can start off with Ozzy, Ozzy Osbourne to whatever people's list to from Elvis Presley. You know they banned Elvis on TV from showing him from the waist down because his, his pelvis, the way he moved. I had to throw Elvis in there for some of you old ones. But it, it <laughs> can I tell you, he's, he's, he's Mickey Mouse nowadays. <laughs> Blinding Lights, all-time number one. Surpassed Chubby Checker's 1960s classic, The Twist, of all-time number one spending. Spending 90 total weeks on the Hot 100 chart in November. You know what the number one selling record of all times is? The Beatles. John Lennon. I, be, I believe you can look back. Now, I'm not that old, but I, 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 you can look back and you really start researching this and how Satan has got into the music. And he started changing cultures and, and, and started changing the way we act. And I'm going to tell you, America's in a mess. And I, anyway, I ain't done. And I told you Sunday, in the 70s, it was record players, right? Eight tracks and had their cars, rolled the windows down, jamming. In the 80s, it was the boom box where everybody walked around with the boom box and we'd set that thing out there and start, I don't know if we had one, but I'm sure we may have had a cousin that had one. We grew up at the boys club. I know I've seen them there. But they'd set that thing up over there and everybody listening to that music. 
right? It's probably the Jackson 5 or something like that. But in the 90s, it was the bumping car stereos. This is when you had the big 12s amp and all that. We was putting that music out. And now, I told you Sunday, it, it's straight to the brain. We don't care about the big car system. But every time somebody gets out of the car, I was over there yesterday, a guy walks up to me, a uh, real estate guy, and, uh, and as soon as he turns around and walks off, he pops them blessed things in his ears. And I thought, surely to goodness not. The Lord's giving me this message. But here's what I'm telling you. It's straight to the brain. When I grew up in the 90s, early 90s, when I started in the high school, it was gangster rap, came on the scene. Bobby Cook, where's he at? I know he remembers this. Well, that is a pitiful excuse for security. <laughs> I'm just thinking. I'm just thinking. But I'd be picture Bobby all day. But here's what I'm telling you. When it, whenever we was teenagers, when we went from eighth grade to ninth grade, this is when uh, gangster rap had come on the scene. Easy E and NWA, and uh, I don't want to tell you what NWA stands for, but Snoop Dogg. Everybody knows Snoop Dogg, right? The Chronic. That was his CD that come out. And so here, here's here's what I'm telling. You. In the '70s, now late '70s, they was back playing songs that say smoke marijuana. In the late, early 90s, you've got Snoop Dogg that's come on the scene. The title of his uh, CD is The Chronic. And, and you know what he's talking about, smoking weed, right? And, 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 and here's what I'm telling you. I like gangster rap. I can still sing. I'm not going to sing it, but I can tell you every word to uh, Easy e Dr. Dre, Ice Cube, uh, all that stuff, because that's where I was at. And I, guess what? I could still sing every word to Hank Williams Jr., to, to George Jones, to Merle Haggard. And this is where we was at. We, I don't know. Maybe we was a, a rug, a redneck and a thug. I don't know. But, but it, it's, uh, I, I knew every song. <laughs> Right, you are too. That's where some of you's at right now. You start messing with me, bless God, I go look at your radio in your car. But here, here, here's, here's what I'm telling you. I'll check your iPad, your earpods, or whatever you got there. But, but here's, here's what I'm telling you. I can hear either one of them songs. I can still hear them. I've been saved 25 years. I can still hear uh, 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 Dr. Dre or The Chronic. I can hear that song uh, the, 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 whenever they've done the Super Bowl and old uh, uh, Snoop Dogg and them was playing on that thing and he's, they're playing that old music. Boy, I was feeling it. I'm going to tell you, I, I was, you know what happens? I can hear the chronic. My mind goes back to whenever I was 17, 18 years old, sitting in an apartment over here, my buddy that's in the devil's hell right now, smoking the joint right there, passing the thing around. That's where my mind goes. I can hear Hank Williams Jr., the man of, blue, the man of steel. You ever heard that? And it takes my mind back to my daddy taking me and my brother to school in a 1972 Chevy C10. And he'd say in the Man of Steel, my friends all call me Superman. And I, that boy had to pitch me. I'm going to tell you, if I, if I could find me a 1972 Chevrolet today and I could afford it, I'd go sit in that thing. Bless God, I'd pray it and I'd cry like a baby thinking about my daddy. Music's powerful. But here's Dr. Dre. This is in, in the early 90s, Dr. Dre. When he comes on the scene. This is whenever I think Satan has went from right here. From back playing CDs in the churches. Burning CDs. And tell, to this. That it's, it, it hit America so hard. I don't know if we're coming back. But Dr. Dre. That's his name. His real name is Andrew Ramel Young. Born February 1965. Known professionally as Dr. Dre. is an American rapper. Record producer and entrepreneur. He is the founder of. Get, listen to this. Aftermath Entertainment. You think that's coincidence? I don't. Previously co-founded, co-owned, and was the president of this, Death Row Records. Now here, here's, what I, here, here's what I'm telling you. If you can see what I, I, maybe you never liked Dr. Dre, but I did. And I've sang his songs. I, I mean, I remember still in uh, NWA CDs that had parental advisory explicit. Mama wouldn't let us have them. She'd beat us to death. I was brought up in church. We get out the end of our dirt road, let's go, we was bumping some Dr. Dre ice cube or something like that, and we might even hit Hank, ain't no telling. But here's what I'm telling you about Dr. Dre, Death Row Records, Aftermath Entertainment, the owner. He owns the beats, the ones that, the, these beats that came out. If you have I'm not condemning nobody. I'm not, my son's got the, the, the things that go in your ear. My ears are blessed a little, but I might have a pair. But he's the one that, whether he invented them, I doubt it, but they put his name on it. About like George Foreman and the George Foreman Grill, right? But here's what I'm telling you. They got the most powerful man in music to produce this hellacious thing. 
And here's what I'm telling you about the beets. 108.9 million shipments last year. Samsung was second with 38.3 million shipments. Exomnia came in third with 25.4 million shipments. So over 200 million pair of these things have been sent out. There's only 300 million people in, in America, right? Because I'm sure they're going all over the world. But I'd say that's still one in every three, peop every three people in America has a pair of these things that we put on our head. And guess what's happening? We're playing this, this music, and it's going straight to our brain. And you say, oh, it's not hurting me. I believe it's hurting us. I believe it's hurting us. And, 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 and the, probably the most influential person in history to cause this drastic change in music, I believe, is Dr. Dre. Now, if he was here, I thought, what if he gets a copy of this? He just have to get him a copy. I don't know. But, but here's what I, I, maybe he's ignorant of what Satan's used him for. But here's, here's what I'm telling you. From the 90s all the way to right now to this day, he is still one of the most influential people in music. And here's what I'm telling you. That music's not praising God. That music is, is not drawing us closer to God. It's not moving us to God. As if it's done anything, it's got our girls naked. It's got our boys acting like fools. I don't want to get ahead of myself. But here's what I'll show you, the, the influence of music. You say music is not influencing nobody. It is influencing the world. It's influencing our young folks. Here's what I'm going to tell you. Morgan Wallen, y'all know who he is? I, I kind of like him. But here's what I'm going to tell you. Every country redneck boy in America today is wearing a mullet. You know why? Because of Morgan Wallen. He brought it back. Billy Ray Cyrus played it back in the 90s, and now Morgan Wallen's brought the thing back. And it looks cool. I mean, if I didn't have Widow's Peak, I'd probably have one. But, but here, here's one of Chris Stapleton. He's another big country star, big shaggy beard, big long hair, big belly. Look, this is the thing, the macho man, right? How many? And, and here's what I'm telling you. People in America today, if they're bigger young people, they've got growing a beard all they can. They're letting their hair grow long. If they don't, they've cut a, uh, uh, they've cut a mullet in their hair. Here's, who started that? They're influenced through the music. You say, oh, no. How about saggy pants? How many people have been wearing we've seen in the last 10 years? This just came out. I got to research. You know who started this? Some rapper. Oh, I know where they say it originally started. But, but here, here's what I'm, I, I'm telling you. Snoop Dogg. You thought it was a joke back in the 90s when he was uh, firing up the chronic, right? Now marijuana is legal in almost every state in America. Yeah, oh, it's coming to North Carolina too. Oh, yeah. Girls showing their bodies. These pants that they wear are ungodly. <laughs> I ain't even going to say it. I'm going to tell you, I, I, they, they need to kick that guy that created yoga pants in the, in the kneecap. <laughs> I got to go on. <laughs> I got to, Frankie. Here's what I'm telling you. How about gothic? This, 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 I've seen kids, you've seen them around here. Black fingernails, black makeup, piercings in all over them. I'm not condemning nobody if you, you pierced whatever, maybe your grandchild, I'm not telling. But here's what I'm telling you. There's some satanic mess plugged into their head and saying this is it, this is it, this is it, this is it. And these influences through these beats that Satan has put in there. He's the musical instrument. And here's, the songs ain't even that good. If you start dissecting the lyrics of it, it's a joke. Going to take my horse to the old town Sure. Ah, I think ain't no more. Huh? But it's that beat. And we start playing. And, it, and it, I don't care who you are, how old you are, if I could play that song, every one of you older folks, you've been here just bobbing your head. <laughs> it's Satan. It's infiltrated the music. And he's turning our young folks. And I'm telling you, we laugh and, and say, oh, it's just music. But I'm telling you, something has changed in our society. To where people, I, I don't want to get ahead of myself. Give me just a few more minutes. Cardi B, if your child ever listens to that devil woman, I would take a belt off. I'm going to tell you now, that is the most ungodly mess I've ever heard in my life. And guess where she's at? At the top of the charts. I mean, it's so perverted, you can't even listen to it. Luke Combs. I ain't trying to get in your car. Listen to you. Look, I, I, I'm, I'm pouring my, giving my, my own problems here. Ice cold beer never broke my heart. How many people was singing that? 
And I was thinking today, maybe it's never broke his heart, but I can tell you, I had a Christian mama one day when I was 17 years old and a state trooper took her baby boy home drunk. It sure broke my mama's heart. But yet in America, we're, we're, we're singing it word for word and, you know, and, and, and taking this guy to the top of the charts, making him more time meaner because he's telling everybody ice cold beers never broke nobody's heart. And there's so many songs make a light of heaven. And I'm going to tell you, I've, I've been guilty of singing them, going along with it. How about when I stood outside those pearly gates and suddenly I realized there must be some mistake. If he'd known half the things I'd done, he'd never let me in. Right? Can I tell you? God knows everything we've done. And I, I believe he, he, because of Jesus Christ is how we're getting it. But here's what I'm telling you. We've sung that for years. If heaven ain't a lot like Dixie. Hank Weaves was just in, in concert last week. And I, I'm going to tell you, my flesh wanted to go. But I'd been studying on this, and the Lord said, I dare you. But if heaven ain't a lot like Dixie, I don't want to go. Well, bless God, you probably ain't going because heaven ain't going to be nothing like Dixie. And then, then this, this other guy, he, he says, heaven just couldn't be any better than this. <laughs> anyway, and this is why, I'm going to tell you now, that this, is, this is my thinking. Give me a few more minutes. I know the kids are back there and we're going to get out. But this is why I think the ABCs is, is what we've been convincing people to get saved. Because now, through music, we've all been singing it. Church folks have been singing it Monday through Saturday. And then we come in here and say, how great is our God? And here, here's what I'm telling you. This is why everybody thinks they're going to heaven. Everybody's going to heaven and hell just ain't that bad. And it's been through music. It's changed our country. Here's what our, our, our youth is disrespectful to authorities. 50% of hip hop is about can't nobody tell you nothing. You got your own rules. Nobody, you don't listen to nobody. It's about murder. I'm telling you, we live in a naked society. It, it's a shame. It's pitiful the way that, that people dress, that, that girls dress. Guys wear their pants down, ain't, ain't, ain't scared, to, no respect whatsoever. I'm telling you, I'm a plumber. James, you're a plumber. You ain't walking around like that, are you? Not on purpose. But here, here's what I'm telling you. Murders, kids have no value of life anymore because of, of their thug role model screaming in their head. I mean, we got it pumping in their head. Get your AK, get your chopper, get the sweeper, pull it out, mow them down, cut them down, cut them down, right? I'm not that old, folks. I ain't 17 years older than my first one. <laughs> we live in a drunken society. Armored, or, or the screaming, cold beer that never broke my heart. Turn it up, turn it up, kill enough, drink enough, drink it up, drink it up. We live in an addiction that's rampant. And we've got an artist that we're sending to the top saying, twist it up. And this is, I'm, look, I got to go on. But the kind of music we're listening to. Nobody has to tell me not to listen to Hell's Bells or Highway to Hell or Shout at the Devil. You don't have to tell me not to listen to that no more. Now, I, I like, I've been to Pantera concerts. But I like Metallica, Rage Against the Machine. I've been to Ice-T concerts. I mean, I, I, it's, anyhow. It, but you, no, when I got saved, nobody had to tell me, you don't sing Hell's Bells. Or I'm on the highway to hell. It, you didn't have to tell me that, but the kind of music we're listening to. 1 Corinthians 10, 23. Here's what we'd say. All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. So Paul's saying, all, it's okay if I listen to that, but it don't edify. It's not expedient, but it, don't ed it edifies me not. I realize if I listen to this kind of music, then it really is not going to do any, any good for God. And I won't go there for time, but here's, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 8, Paul, he's addressing the issue if it's okay to eat this meat that's offered to idols. And Paul's saying, you know what, I could eat it, but if my, if my meat offend, I'll not eat it. And so here's, what, it, it, here's, here's a question I want you to ask yourself, or if you ask me. Is a certain type of music other than gospel wrong for you to listen to? It, 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 is it? I don't know. I can't answer that for you. I know what Romans chapter 14 says, It's good to neither eat flesh nor drink wine or anything whereby thy brother stumbleth or is offended or is made weak. Have thy faith, have thy faith before God. Happy is he that condemneth not himself in the thing which he alloweth. But if he eateth unto doubtful dispensation, let him be damned. So here's what I'm going to tell you. If the Holy Ghost ever gets in your car and says, You better turn it, you better turn it. 
I mean, everyone was talking. There's some songs that may be played on 93.1 or 98.7. And boy, I get to thinking about how good God's been to me. Amen. Matter of fact, I was going down the road and this guy starts singing, I just don't think heaven gets any better than this. Nobody had to tell me to turn it off. I felt like the Holy Spirit said we don't listen to that. And, and so here, here's what I'm telling you. Romans 7, 23, here's what Paul said. But I see another law in my members worn against the law of my mind and bring me into captivity the law of sin which is in my memory. Paul said there's something going on here that's beating against my mind and it's bringing me into captivity of sin. <laughs> and if, it's, if that music you're listening to is taking your mind to other places, then yes, you don't need to be listening to it. But that, that's between you and God. I can't tell you what to do. You're going to have to listen to God. But here, let me give you this. I, I got to hurry. Oasis. This is in the 19, in, in 2010 to 20. This song, this band, this group was on the uh, number one chart for, it was, it was almost number one. I don't remember. I, I wrote it down. But the song is Don't Look Back in Anger. And here, here's what I'm telling you about. I told you myself about I can hear the man of steel or hear Hank Williams Jr. My mind goes back to there. Or I can hear certain songs and my mind will take me back there. And guess what? My flesh liked it there. Oh, yeah. I mean, I can hear this song and my mind will go right there where I never should have been. And so here's, here's how this song that was stayed on number one charts for 18 weeks straight. The band Oasis, don't look back in there. Guess how it starts off? The first words are this. Slip inside the eye of your mind. Don't you know you might find a better place to play. And if I could sing, I would slip inside the mind of your eye and you might find a better place to play. Y'all have heard it, if I could play it. But here's what I'm telling you. You better be very careful what you're putting in your head. Music today is about sex, drugs, rebellion, disrespect. And here's what I, I, I told Dalton. I said, ask man if he will bring teens in here. I'm not trying to make nobody mad. I want to help you. Because I'm going to tell you, things that enter your mind, it ain't coming out. Right. It's never leaving you. Unless something bad happens. But here's, here's what I'm telling you, parents. You need to know what your child is pumping in his head or her head. And I see these kids that are raised in church, love God, make, I mean, make good testimonies, praise the Lord. Now they're promoters of hell. Oh, yeah. And every now and then you'll see them on social media and they'll post a Bible verse up there to let you know they still got it. But I'm going to tell you, they act like the world. They look like the world. They represent the world. Are they saved? I don't know. But I can promise you this, that Satan has been blasting the message in their head. Not mad at none of you, not trying to start nothing, but parents are scared to be parents. And there's nothing wrong we're telling your child to get that devil out of your house. You pay your bills. I'm not telling you how to parent. I've got my own. I've still got one and a half at home. Captain, she's barely, she's about to get kicked out. But it, it, <laughs> now I'm just speaking. I don't ever want to leave. I don't. But it, here's what I'm going to tell you. They understand one thing. God give us what we've got. And we ain't bringing that hell in here. Now, I'm not perfect. I told you Sunday, I need to write a book on the wrong I've done. But here, here's what I'm telling you. Nothing wrong with you telling your kid to get that mess out of my house. Don't you ever play it again. And I, I was thinking today, <laughs> it, it, I ain't even saying it. Gavin, he, he, he ever, ever pull in my yard playing that Cardi B, I'll blow his blessed windows out, his tires off. Here, here, but here's what I'm telling you. Statistics say that teens listen to two and a half hours of music a day. Church kids are getting maybe five hours of church a, a week. So on average, our kids are getting 17 and a half hours of just music. That's just music. With our headphones on, pumping the world's Satan's jam in our ears, getting infiltrated with it. We want to come to church, if they're here to every service, maybe five hours a week, and think the, think the preacher's going to make a difference. First, I'm about done. First Peter 2, 11. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from flesh and lust, which war against your soul. Paul said abstain. God said abstain from it, which war against the soul. And here's what I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm done. I, I don't want to quit. I'd like going for an hour, but I tried to hurry up and start so we could get out of here. 
2 Corinthians 11, 14, 15, And no marvel for Satan himself is transformed to an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if he ministers also to be transformed to ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Let me read that a little slower. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed into ministers of righteousness whose ends shall be according to their works. Here's what he's saying. Don't make, don't make it think it's no great thing if Satan come into the church and start infiltrating music in, 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 in the society in America. And he's got his workers that, infi- that, that, that do the same thing. And this is why I, 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 I've been thinking about this, and I hate to even say it, I ain't trying to make nobody mad, because I don't care what kind of music you listen to. I mean, me and Mark, we'll ride, we drove 30 hours. David, radio never turned on. We drove him here to Canada, never hear the radio, never turn it on. I don't care about it. But this is why the hymns just don't seem to be getting it done no more. This is why we, 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 people are promoting this, these, 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 this stuff and it, you start singing the uh, uh, old songs of the faith and they'll say it's boring. <sighs> I got to go on. But Satan has discovered how to get people to think we're worshiping with our emotions. We want the big speakers. We want light shows. And I'm not condemning nobody. Look. But that stuff takes me back to the Pantera concert where I'm out of my mind tripping ass. And I'm going I'm to I'm be done. I ain't trying to make nobody mad. But this is for me. I can't go to church and listen to it. Maybe you can. But for me, it's wrong. About me defense. I can't do it. Because this is where it takes my mind. Romans 8, 7, Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. And here's what, here, 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 I'm done with this. A lot of the gospel we hear today never says a word about Jesus. It never says a word about the blood, about heaven, about mercy, about grace. But Satan's tried to make it sound real spiritual. And guess what he's thrown in there with it? A good little tune to help us enter into euphoria. And I've been studying this, and I believe a lot of the charismatic stuff that we see that, that's going on, people acting foolish and crazy, they say they're, they're being slain in the spirit. We're being, they're being slain in the flesh. And here, here, I'm done. You can stand your feet. Go ahead. I'm going to shut up. But here's, here's what I'm going to tell you as far as if the music we're listening to is not drawing us to God, Bringing our mind to mercy and peace and grace. It's not of God. And so I'm not here to tell you. I'd like to go on. I mean, I, I, it's amazing what I feel like Satan has done through music. But I hope I've shown you a picture of society today. And we can blame it on TV. Yeah, it's probably pretty good. How come every commercial we get, you hear has got a music playing? Every, every store we go in, there's music playing. Everything we do, there's always some kind of music. And we sing along with it. We're just blasting this devilish mess out. And here's what I'm telling you, teens. Don't be a stumbling block. Man, you're the only hope we have. I mean, it's up to you to carry the gospel. I mean, we, me too, but it's up to you. Man, you're living in this society. And I believe God gets the folks just to be different. Say, so, you know what, I don't want to hear it. Emily? I'm just going to close like this. I, I don't, I'm not trying to make nobody mad. I'm trying to help you. You, you saying, are you telling the music I'm listening to is wrong? I believe that's between you and God. And I believe God will show you. But if it takes your mind to this world, and it takes your mind appeals to the flesh, yeah, it's probably wrong. Amen. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for your word. God, I know I don't have it figured out, don't, don't claim to. But God, I just thank you for your sweet Holy Spirit that guides us. And Lord, I thank you for the music, Lord, that, that, that you created music. And Lord, I pray you forgive me for uh, my shortcomings. And, and God, the, the times I've gave in to the flesh. And so Lord, I pray you just help us, you guide and direct us. And Lord, I thank you for our church, thank you for these folks that's here. Lord, I pray for young folks. I pray for the teenagers that's here. And Lord, in the society that they're having to fight against to try and stand for you. Lord, you help them. Lord, help us. Help us to be that witness you called us to be. 
God, I pray you have your way here at the church. Continue to grow it, and, and Lord, just bless and, and, and grow your people. So, Lord, we thank you for your word in Jesus' holy name. Amen.